yeah, we were obviously very disappointed with the uh, with the result. Um, I don't think I've been involved in a game where virtually every mistake that you make you get punished, and it just felt that uh, that's how the game went for us. We um, if we lost the ball, they were breaking away so fast, and how clinical they were in their finishing was was incredible. So. Um, so it was uh, a really, really tough night for us. Second half, the guys showed good personality, uh, showed a courage to take the ball and and to play, and uh, yeah, the uh, at least they showed the spirit in the second half. But um, yeah, they were uh, they were way too good for us this evening. Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the Celtic Forever podcast. We're going to go through a very quick 15, 20 minute discussion on the Dortmund disaster last night. Um, but what I will say before we bring in John is we won't destroy our club, we won't destroy the players. It's a one-off game. We're just going to have a quick chat about this. And what I'll also say before we move on is we will never be the worst team in Champions League history. That's reserved for only one club. Right, let's bring in John. How are you doing, John? I am okay, Xander. How are you? <laughs> Apart from the opening rant. <laughs> yeah, John. I'm sick and tired of hearing all this negativity. After one game, we know it was pathetic, we know it was bad, yeah, we understand that we're going to go through this one individual game. It's happened in the past with Barcelona, PSG, John, we've seen it all before. We're not the only club to be demolished by Borussia Dortmund in Germany, John, all sorts of teams. Atletico Madrid beating 5 nothing a couple of years ago with Dortmund, you know, it's not it's not the first time it's ever happened, John, a few other teams as well, but um, we're here to discuss Celtic, John, let's get into it. Um, we, better, we better housekeeping first. Hit the notification bell, please. Hit the subscribe button, please. And hit the like button as well, just to help out our wee channel. Right, John. Right away, red flag for me. Carter Vickers knowing the team, right? I know one player doesn't make it a squad, right? We all know that. But right away, as soon as I saw the Vickers was in the team, I thought, my, my immediate thought was, this could be a tough night. I will. I touched on that on... Uh... The game after St Johnson game, I did say that uh, Trusty. It makes me feel uncomfortable with that. You know, he doesn't have a right foot whatsoever. He's playing on the right hand side, uh, defence, and he's a left footed player. He's got to turn his whole body around to make a pass. And I says that uh, I wasn't comfortable with comfortable with that, especially in a big game like that. I'm not saying I'm not blaming Trusty, by the way, far from it. But look. You need the right players in the right positions to compete with top teams. Uh, and sadly, we didn't have our main defender playing, which is, uh, it's no good. But look, we're not going to blame one player. It's no Trusty's fault we get scalped. It's, uh, it's a team effort, Xander. It's a team game. Team didn't show up. Simple as that. They bottled it. Yeah, John, we're going to talk about individual players, right? But we're not picking on these individual players. It's a one-off game, as you say, John, and we didn't turn up. So we're allowed to talk about the display in this one game, John. What I will also say, John, is we are the team in the Champions League, right? Clubs, fans, you know, that aren't even in the Champions League, Champions League should keep their mouth shut, to be honest with you. We're in the Champions League and we still have a great, and I'm talking about a great chance to qualify from this section, John. So that's what I will say right off the bat, right? So uh, we're going to go through the remaining games in about five minutes, John. but. Uh, yeah, the trust he wasn't great, you know. It was like a rabbit in the head, headlights, didn't he? As did quite a lot of our players on Tuesday night, John. Um a wee bit of stage fright, I thought, you know, that massive happening. What an atmosphere it was in Dortmund Stadium, John, to be fair to them and the Celtic fans, you know. I think both sets of fans, brilliant atmosphere. It looked good on the camera, it looked brilliant. Um, but I think the you know, it's like all these other clubs come to Celtic Park, John, they get stage fright, and I think that's what happened in Germany for Celtic last night. Possibly, possibly. Uh, I'm using the term bottlers because, look, the Celtic team, I think Celtic's a really good side. I'm going to say that. I'm a Celtic fan. But I think when it comes to playing against these big team, big teams, especially away from home, I think Celtic lose their bottle. I think they're capable of competing with Dortmund. I definitely think they're capable if they didn't lose their bottle. And that's what it all comes down to against the, the big teams in the Champions League. Can you keep your bottle away from home in a big stadium like that that holds 80,000 screaming fans? Uh, and Celtic, basically, nah, they couldn't keep their bottle. That's what happened. But I do think Celtic are capable of competing with Borussia Dortmund. If it was at Celtic Park, I think it would have been maybe a, 
a different story, Xander. But sadly for us, that tie was drawn at uh, Dortmund Stadium. And uh, look, uh, by the way, the Celtic fans, fantastic. Fair play to them, the ones that showed up. The pyro display and all that, fantastic for them. Yeah, John, it was fantastic. I felt sorry for the Celtic fans last night in Germany, to be honest with you. But, you know, it's, um, they just they just do that everywhere they go in Europe, didn't they? The Celtic fans, that was standing. And they mingled well with the Dortmund fans as well, I might add, John. But um, we did say on the preview of the game, we did say on the preview, I'll be a bit worried about saying we'd be happy with a narrow defeat. I mean, you're worried about telling the truth. You're going to be happy with a very narrow defeat, keep the score down. You know, we move on to the next game, we're unlucky, etc. That's we'd be happy with that, or even a draw. You know, and it turned out, John, that you know, an a narrow defeat would have been an outstanding result last night. Well, I, that's what we said. Is if, we, if we can leave that stadium with our heads held high, maybe we a two-one defeat or something like that, one-one, two-one, or something like that. It, we we could be happy with a night like that, but sadly not. It's a proper scalping yet again, Xander. It's uh, it's a sore one, isn't it? It's very sore, John. It's very painful. I mean, to get that equaliser and then concede a goal within a minute and a half, that was quite bad, John. That's, you know, that's like amateur stuff, to be honest with you. You know, I know it's a makeshift defence there with trusty and scales at the back there, John. I know it's makeshift, but we still had Taylor and Johnston and Cameron, a full squad, more or less. There was only one new player at the back there, John. We should have done better defensively last night, but a lot better, obviously. It was pathetic, actually, watching some of the, the stray passes, etc., John. But, you know, it's, it was hard to watch, as you say. Very difficult to watch, John. But to concede that goal so quickly after equalising, that was suicide, John. Ah, you've got to learn to hold your nerve in the Champions League. Uh, that's what I'm saying. It's, you kind of let a, a, just score a lovely goal for Dyson Maida, by the way. He was the right place, right time. He gets it over the line. And uh, and then it just collapses right after that. It was just went for bad to worse. Um, absolutely folded. But like I say, I do think Celtic's capable of competing with teams like Dortmund. But they've got to really hold their nerve. And I think this playing out from the back, heart attack material has got to stop against these big teams away from home. Slow the pace of the game down. Punt a couple of long balls up the puck instead of the goalkeeper like picking the ball up, then dropping it down, try to pick a pass, get it blooted up the park and try and hit them on, you know, a long ball game basically because their defence is vulnerable and Celtic never tested them with anything like that, the long ball. This passing out for the back to me last night, it was absolutely abysmal. And... It's a cause for concern going to teams away from home in Europe and then that passing it out for the back. This isn't the commander that St. Johnson were playing. It's Borussia Dortmund, last season's Champions League finalists. They're not going to award you all that space at the back, Xander. Um, mm. So, last yeah, night, I, mean, I, would, I, I would like to have seen a bit more of the goalkeeper punting up the park. Get either on, try and get some knock ons happening and try and expose a, a dodgy defence because they're not the greatest at the back as we know. Yeah, that's it, John. And uh, I think we do need to, you know, change, you know, our approach in the away games, especially, John, in the Champions League. You know, at home, it's slightly different, isn't it? You know, but in the away games, I think we do need to change. But Brendan's already come out the day and said that, you know, he's going to stick to the way he approaches these games, John, so you're not going to see any change. Well, if he's going to stick to the way, that way of playing in the Champions League, he's going to get exposed by the good teams. That's all I'll say, because they're not going to sit back and watch you passing it about the back. They're going to close you down fast, win the ball and score a goal. Yeah. Yeah, John, yeah, again, stream yard breaking up. Sorry, apologies for that, for that folks. Um, yeah, but I heard what you said just about there, John. All right, John, so let's have a look at the, the before we get on to the individual players, and I know you didn't watch all the game. I did, I watched it all, right? But yeah, I think you saw enough to, to have a discussion on it. Um, but the next three home fixtures, John, we won number through, right? So, next three home fixtures, Leipzig, who got destroyed last night as well, I'm sure. I think they got a heavy defeat last night. We've got them at home. We've got Club Bruges at home. We've got Young Boys at home, John. Three winnable, definite winnable games there. And if we win them, we've still got a great chance to qualify here, John. I thought it's, it's one game. 
away from home against a team that spent millions in the transfer market. So we can't compete with that, really. But I, th- I think Celtic possibly could have competed a lot better than they did, put it that way. They're a better team than what they showed. But uh, I, I can't remember what we were talking about there, to be honest with you. But uh, I've just lost a mind we were old when it comes to that game last night, Xander. It was... Uh, Ah, it's a sore one, but we'll move on as long as look as long as our form doesn't slip in the league because of this. I don't think it will. I th- think Celtic will be out to prove a point against Ross County, and that's uh, to me that's all that matters is the win in the league. And I think every other team in the league should look at Celtic's form in the league and uh, be more concerned about ra- that rather than uh, a one-half Champions League game. Yeah, John, as you say. Last year's Champions League finalists, you know, it's um, as I said at the very start, they've gubbed um, you know, big teams, uh, Atletico Madrid, there was a few others, I, I didn't even write them down, but there was a few in Germany, John, so um, it doesn't make us feel any better, don't get me wrong, it's still, it's still a sore one, we have to take it in the chin, we have to move on, and that's what we're trying to do, John, um, starting with Ross County on Sunday, but uh, our next three away games is Atalanta, that's coming up next for us. Then was Zagreb away and Aston Villa as the last game, actually, so hopefully we'll qualify by then. But, uh, John, it's the Champions League, John, but, but we don't really like it because of these heavy defeats. That We've said that for the start, you know, you sort of dread these games. Uh, and it was last night, it was no exception, was it? It's, it's just another one of these games that you dread. Aye. Uh, look, I've, I've said it all along for the start of this podcast. I don't like the Champions League. I just don't like it. Celtic, they're not equipped to compete at that level. I suppose it's it's the same thing for teams like St. Johnson trying to compete with Celtic. It's a similar type of thing. Well, we're not equipped to compete in it. Maybe some of the smaller teams like uh, Bratislava, we could get a result against teams like that. But when it comes to teams like, uh, you know, the big teams, Barcelona, Real Madrid, Dortmund, Man City and all that, but we're not going to compete with that. I know we beat them in a friendly Man City, but that's a totally different thing altogether. Um, we are just no equipped to compete. It's as simple as that. Um, unless I'm not going to say I use the the Rangers fans' terms as we need fresh investment. I'm not going to use that. Celtic's in a great financial position to win the league and all that. That's all that matters to me and you, and it's, it's all that should matter to every Celtic fan. There'll be a lot of Celtic fans right now shouting, sack Brendan and all that. They're just not equipped. We've not got the money to compete, Sander. That's the simple answer. Yeah, that's it, John. Um, and sack Brendan is never going to come out of my mouth, John. You know, that's something that's a nonsense, really. Uh, he's got Celtic flying. This is a one-off game, remember, folks. This is a one-off. I know... We're no great away from home in Europe and we need to fix that and we need to fix that quickly. But at, at the end of the day, it is a one-off game, John, and they can do it to any club, Dortmund, they really can. Um, individual players, this is no witch hunt, this is just an assessment on the players last night only, folks, right? Don't want any comments about all oh, you're picking on the players. It's an individual assessment on players in one 90-minute game, right? And what I want to do is start with the bright lights first from last night, John. There wasn't a many, but there was a couple. Alistair Johnson, I thought was decent, although he was quite wasteful at times as well. Alex Valley, when he came on, I thought he looked okay. You wouldn't have saw that, John. And Dyson, of course, uh, always puts in his usual 100% effort. But apart from that, John, I think we, the players sort of froze. I think, you know, it's, there was a bit of uh, bottle going there as well, to be honest with you. I thought it's, it's the worst game I saw Callum McGregor playing since he's been at Celtic. Uh, well. The one that stood out for me last night, for what I've seen, I switched it off early, of course. I just felt that was going to happen. I don't want to watch that happening to Celtic. But uh, Dyson Maeda, Xander, he was the one shining light I've seen on the park before I turned it off. He was getting stuck into everything. See if we had 11 Dyson Maeders, we'd have won that comfortably. <laughs> yeah, of course we would have. Uh... Uh, I'm going to repeat myself again, John. I don't want listeners thinking we're picking on players. We're, we're discussing 90 minutes of football. We know every player we've got are, are great and they're brilliant in the league and they're champions and they're serial winners. We know that. Engels, John, I thought he was hiding last night. That's my personal opinion. I thought I know everybody had a bad game, more or less, but I thought Engels was hiding. It, it was nowhere to be seen. There was no passing. There was no tackling. There was nothing for Engels last night, John. I also thought Greg Taylor had a poor game. 
as I said, McCallum uh, won his worst game for Celtic. Um, but, you know, once the, the stray passing starts drawing, it sort of spreads through the entire team, didn't it? So I think it was like a disease spreading through a body. It was like a, it was like a, a performance, a poor performance spreading through the full team. Bernardo, John, non-existent. Bernardo giving the ball away for them to get their, one of their two penalties, I might add. Very soft penalties, John, but they get them anyway. Doesn't matter at the end of the day. Bernardo, I thought, was poor as well, John. Kuhn, again, I mean, you wouldn't have saw this, John, but he was throwing the keeper one and one at the very end, and his shot was so weak, it was like a pass back to the keeper. So, yeah, I just thought, I just thought the players, I don't know, I, I don't know if it's saying they gave up, it was maybe too strong, but they looked very weak, very vulnerable, John, no strength, and uh, they just looked at, they looked, they looked like a team playing their first game in the Champions League last night. I will, for the first time in the season, for what I've seen, they looked like a team that's no performing as, as a unit. That's what I noticed. Yeah. It was, it was, it was all over the place. It was, uh, I, I don't want to talk, say anything bad about any of the players, but if every player gave the same effort as dies in my either, then Celtic would be unstoppable. But sadly, no every player at Celtic can uh, put in that kind of performance. But that's what we need to compete. That's exactly what you need, is that uh, that fighting spirit that Dyson's got. That needs to spread throughout the team in the Champions League. We need to see it for every single player. I know just Dyson Maeda, Sander, and Kyogo as well. I'll put, I'll put him in that hat as well, them two. Um, their work rate is unbelievable. And I can't say the same about the rest of the players last night, sadly. Yeah, so I just don't understand why a team at serial winners, trophy after trophy, you know, playing playing well at home in the Champions League as well, John. Every time we go away from home, it's a different different team that turns up. You know, it's a different team. I just don't understand it. You know, it's, it's something Brendan needs to get on top of very quickly because we've got a team... Full of talented players there, John. And as you said about 10 minutes ago, you expected better. I expected better. Everybody expected better last night. And it was just the same old, same old winter against these bigger clubs, as you say, your PSGs, your Real Madrids, your Barcelonas, John. It's the same thing that happens every time we go to these stadiums. Aye. I, I was kind of half expecting it anyway, to be honest with you, because that's, uh, you, I suppose you could call it Celtic away from home syndrome. It's, uh, honestly, I just I just couldn't watch any more. I had to turn it off. It's, uh, I knew it was going to be a heavy defeat, and the first time I actually seen the result was this morning. I didn't know what the score was till this morning. I, I went on to Celtic Quick News. It's like, oof, 7-1, you're kidding me on. I thought it was bad at yeah. three one when I turned it off. Yeah, well, <laughs> I watched it to the very end. <laughs> I watched every single second of it, John. So, uh, yeah, it was a shame for the boys to bonus you as well. It was, a, it was, it was a shame. You know, you can see they were distraught. Um, and you've got to remember who, what they're up against. You know, some of the players at Dortmund were outstanding, especially their big number ten. He was, he was brilliant. Um, but we can't sit back and admire these players, John. We've got to shake ourselves off, dust ourselves down, and get ready for the next one, John. Because Atalanta, that's that's not going to be easy either. So we need to put in a better showing against Atalanta. Definitely, I had Dyson, Dyson Maeda wasn't he standing in my arm. Them? Why can the rest of the team not have that attitude towards it? Eh? Yeah, Dyson was good, wasn't he? He's, uh, he's just. He's just an outstanding football player. Uh, I don't know, John. I'm, I I kind of put my finger on what went wrong wrong last night after beating Bratislava. You know that's you know that was a brilliant result for us at home, uh, flying everywhere else in the league in the cup, etc. You know, just flying everywhere, and then we go and play in the Champions League away from home, and it's like a different team that turns up. But it really is every time, every time. Um, all right, John, uh, they, uh, they, they actually lost four nothing to Man City last night, Bratislava. Yeah, that's it. Um, Bratislava, you know, Man City put four past them, Joe, John, but we're up at running about that level, wouldn't we? So when Man, Man City scored four against them, we scored five. It just seems, it's just it's a mentality thing, I think, as we Celtic, when we go away from home in Europe. I think it's definitely all in the mind. I think it's 
is something that needs sorted out and Brendan has to work very hard to get in that fix, John, because we can't go on visiting these big grounds and getting beat like with, with the margins, to be honest with you. And it wasn't even just the margin of the scoreline. It was the performance. It was lacklustre. It was. It looked as though we didn't know what to do. We looked as though we'd never played football together as a team. Um. Anyway, John, as I say, we need to move on. We've got to move on. Our next game's against Ross County, John. That's, as you say, that, that is now a massive game. Another chance to go eight points clear at the, at the top of the league ahead of our rivals. Um, also ahead of Aberdeen as well because they don't kick off till later on in Sunday. So, it's a chance to go clear at the top of the league again, John, and I'm sure sure that will be a, um, a good wee tonic for the Celtic supporters. Aye, it's the only tonic and it's the only thing that matters to me. Look, we're never going to win the Champions League. Let's face the facts. Nobody likes getting scalped like that. No team likes getting scalped like that. Uh, and we have tasted that a few times. We know how bad it can feel. But our bread and butter is the Scottish League. And if we win that, that'll take the bad memory of uh, last night away. Just being honest, it's all that matters to me. I want to see Celtic flying in the league. It's all I want to see. And of course, we've still got another three games at Celtic Park in the Champions League. And I think we'll win all three of them. And that'll put us through to the, the last 16, Xander. That's, that's just my uh, prediction uh, looking into the near future. Mm, yeah, that's it, John. Um, just felt sorry for the boys last night, John. It's just They, they looked lost. You know, Callum, it's, they must have seen the boy play. Captain, fantastic. Serial winner, John. Can he string two passes together? Engels, lost. Nowhere to be seen. Bernardo, lost. Nowhere to be seen. Kyogo, nowhere near it. You know, no service, obviously. Dyson, John, brilliant. Yeah, just as usual. But he, he was still part of that 7-1 defeat. Kuhn, nowhere near it. Defence, nowhere near it, John. So, um, just get these players <laughs> back home as soon as possible. Uh, Brendan, Brendan will sort it out. Don't worry about that, John. That's he'll he'll get the best out of the players for Sunday, and then we'll take it for there. Aye, that's all we can do. So aye, that's what I think. Uh, Brendan will. Uh, I don't think he'll need to motivate the players for Sunday. I think the players will be desperate to get back on the park and put things right with the Celtic fans after that display, and they might go out there and absolutely thump Ross County because. The, the, the ought to the Celtic fans put it that way because that's uh, that's a torturous result uh, we can only feel sorry for all the other teams that we scalp in Scotland's Andere St Johnston 6-0 and all their teams Aberdeen 9-1 a long time ago things like that you can only feel sorry for them you know how bad it feels uh, we know how bad it feels we've, we've been on the receiving end of that in the Champions League a few times now and uh, it never, it never gets any easier, does it? Yeah, it never gets any easier. It doesn't feel any better either, you know. Um, but I, I'm thinking ahead of these other fixtures, John. It looks quite good, you know, to get some points out of these games. Um, as you said, we just hope that result last night doesn't affect the players in any way, shape or form, John. If I also have a wee talk about Brendan before we go then, John. Um, obviously, he's not happy. Manager's not happy with the performance and rightly so he sent his players out there to do a job John and the players let him down but could Brendan have you know set the team up slightly different to at least keep the score down a wee bit I think he should have totally uh, changed the tactics that passing out from the back because I was watching from behind the couch well I wasn't because my couch is up against the wall <laughs> 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 Uh, I know what you're saying, but John, I was the same. I had Lee Matthew watching the game with me, and I felt so sorry for the wee man. He's, he's only 10 years old. He's, he's only been following Celtic for about a year or two. And uh, he, just, he didn't know what he was watching. And he, he, I just felt so sorry for him. Um, I was trying to explain to him, you know, this has happened before. Um, but sorry, John, yeah, on you go, what were you saying? Um, you're watching from behind the couch and Brendan Rogers. Hi. Uh, anyway, Matthew, if you're listening, uh... Tell your mum to pull the couch out a wee bit from the wall and dive in behind it every time Celtic's playing a big team, son. That's all I can say to you. <laughs> it was all right. It was okay. He just went on his tablet after it went to 4-1. <laughs> so, 
I think everybody done the same, yeah, but I think I was a glutton for punishment. I don't know. Let us know in the comments if you watched the full game. I was a glutton for punishment. Watch the full game. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, John, what do you think Brendan should do in the next WA fixture, uh, tactic wise? In the Champions League? Are we fixed on the Champions League, John, yet? Uh, well, it's a hard one, isn't it? I know Brendan's saying he wants to keep on playing the way he has had the team playing. But what I would change, especially if a team's known for having a vulnerable defence, try some long balls up front. You know, punt it, out the, punt it up the park and see if somebody can get on the end of it. Get a uh, big either up front in these games and try and look for the knockdowns and stuff like that. That passed out for the back against teams like Dortmund. It, it, it gave me the fear watching it because they were getting closed down so fast and losing the ball. That's one thing that I would change right away is that passing out for the back. I know it's the way Celtic play their game. If you're going to be playing against the big boys, all you're doing is you're opening yourself up to be punished. That's what I seen last night, Xander. They were punished by doing that. Yeah, yeah, definitely punished, John. If you start to finish, more or less, wouldn't it? Punishment. Uh, all right, John, that's enough of that. We've spoken about it. The game's gone. It's away. But it's done and dusted. We dust ourselves down. We move on to Ross County. Um, and, a, and a game that, obviously... We want to win. So when they say it's a must win, but we want to win it. That's three points to put us eight points clear of our rivals, as I said before, and three points clear of Aberdeen. So that would be a good wee tonic, as I say, John. So yeah, Champions League. Let's let's park it for now, John. That's it done for another couple of weeks. Um, as I said at the very start, just remember we will never be the worst Champions League team in history. Just bear that in mind, folks, when you're. Uh, when you're looking at, you know, comments from other club supporters, you know, trying to have a dig at us, etc. John, that's uh, just remember that. Bear that in mind. Right, John. Any wee final comments before you want to call it a day? Did you get some bad comments off uh, Rangers fans or something? No, 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 no comment, comments whatsoever, John. Uh, just in general, reading any wee snippets of videos or news or anything, John. It's just supporters, you know, obviously they're going, our rivals are going to uh, lap that up, aren't they, John? So, no, I don't want to talk about them, John. Uh, have you any uh, final comments, John, on uh, moving forward for Celtic in the league, in the Champions League? What's your final thoughts, buddy? Uh, my final thoughts are, it's all about the league. It's always been about the league. And for the board, that it's like, they've spent money, 20-odd million quid, Nearly 30 million, wouldn't it? Uh, bringing players in that basically froze in the Champions League. Uh, it's something that's been wrong with Celtic for a long time. Uh, it needs to be fixed as soon as possible. Something's got to change away from home. They've really, really got to look at that uh, if they want to, you know, leave at least with a respectable result in these stadiums. But that was, uh, that's pathetic. That's a pathetic result. Uh, and one I kind of half expected. But to me, it's all about the league. I can only say to all the Celtic fans, keep your heads held high. We're in the Champions League and I think we'll qualify. I think we'll win another, uh, three games at home. And I think we'll qualify from that. So all is not lost. It's uh, one game. It's the, probably the biggest game in the group, that Aston Villa. And sadly, both the games are away from home. So... Uh, Win the three games at Celtic Park. Gives a bit of confidence. I think we can get in there and beat Aston Villa. But always remember, everybody, it's all about the domestic game for us. The league, the Scottish Cup, that's all that matters. The League Cup as well, if we want a treble, which I think we will do this season. So keep your heads held high, guys. I think we'll be all right this season. I think we'll do the treble. And I think we'll progress into the last 16. That's my feelings right now. Yeah, John, end on a high. Well done. Well said, buddy. Um, yeah, and I think there's a great chance to qualify for last 16 as long as we don't let last night's performance affect the, the team. Um, and I'm sure Brendan will make sure that doesn't happen. Right, John, thanks for come, coming on. You know, it was a wee bit doom and gloom today. It wasn't too bad, was it? But uh, uh, we got it off our chest, John. That's it done. Uh, we have our video. Thanks for coming on, buddy. And we'll catch you for the preview of uh, Ross County on Saturday. I'll see you Saturday, Xander. Take it easy, mate. Right, take it easy, John. Thanks, buddy. No help on it.